book of Ephesians chapter 6. Good to be here and good to be back at Grace Baptist Church. I'm thankful for the opportunity to preach and be with you guys. Thank you, Brother Jesse, for letting me come and bring my hoodlums. I've got Josiah and Ada here with me. They were my, I would say co-pilots, but they slept most of the way. Amen. Uh, but uh, my wife, Heather, wasn't able to come. We've got, those of you that know us, we've got a pair of foster daughters that are in high school and just couldn't afford to skip class. And uh, that is because of, you know, circumstances and such. I told them, I said, if y'all be better students, we wouldn't have such a hard time skipping class. Amen. But uh, it is what it is. Uh, she wishes she could be here with us. But like I say, she's home with them. But again, thank you for having me. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to preach. I've asked Brother Jesse multiple times what he expects out of me. He just won't tell me. So. Uh, this is uh, this is what the what the Lord's laid on my heart, which is what He wanted. I, I know, I know, Brother Bragg, and so um, this is this is fresh. The ink is might near still wet uh, on this message, um, and I believe it's needed. I believe it's needed. Ephesians chapter six. Uh, look with me at verse ten. Ephesians chapter six, verse ten. And we'll read about 10 verses here, and I'll give you what the Lord's laid on my heart. The Bible says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and uh, watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. That'll be all the reading. Um, Apostle Paul here is writing to the church of Ephesus and what he's doing in this, this passage of Scripture that I've, that I've read before you today is he is speaking on the terms of something that's required or needed in the lives of every believer um, in order to fight in this warfare that every single born-again child of God has been enlisted to fight in. If you're saved, if you've been born again, blood-bought and washed, you are enlisted in a spiritual warfare. That's a fact. And what Paul is doing, again, is he is instructing us on some things that we need to put on in order for us to get to experience what it's like to fight a winning battle. Amen. You've probably heard the expression that uh, some have made in the past, uh, uh, seems like I'm fighting a losing battle. Amen. But now as a believer, that should never be the case if we're doing uh, what the Bible has instructed us to do in regards to how we're to fight this warfare. Amen. Uh, the victory's already been won, uh, uh, and, and whether or not we are obedient to God in how we're to fight this warfare will determine uh, whether or not we're winning or losing. And uh, I, I don't know about you, but, well, I, I, I tell you what, I don't, I don't have to know about you to know this. You probably don't like to lose. Amen. 
Uh, I don't know that I ever met anybody that would be so foolish to say, I enjoy getting beat. I enjoy losing. Amen. Uh, I was talking to uh, uh, Brother Eddie before service a little bit about the Wildcats. You know, I'm from Kentucky. And this year for basketball hasn't been necessarily fun, Brother Eddie. Because they've not been as good as, as we're kind of used to in Kentucky when it comes to basketball. And, and so, you know, uh, I, I, you know, I'm a casual fan now, much, much more casual than I used to be. I used to, used to, man, we got beat by Vanderbilt this past week. God help us, Vanderbilt, okay? In, in times past, my, my week would have been ruined. I mean, I would have been useless. Why? Because I got beat. And, and, you know, used to, I remember as a young person, it was almost like a badge of honor, Brother Jesse, if you handled losing with aggression and fury and throw to fit, it was almost like, oh, you're that kind. Of, you're, you're a competitor. And what I've learned as I've aged is I've learned that uh, acting that way over getting beat uh, uh, is no, no fun way to live. Amen. And being miserable all the time because you get beat here and there uh, is, is, is not fun. And I don't like that. And what, what you learn to do is you learn to tolerate things of that nature. But nevertheless... Uh, that's all that it is. It's tolerating it. It ain't fun. Getting beat and losing ain't fun. It don't take a rocket scientist to know that. And Paul, again, Paul here is speaking on terms of some things that we need to equip ourselves with to fight a winning battle. And he begins, I like what he says in verse 10. He begins by telling us, uh, an important truth. He says, be strong. He's instructing us, be strong in the Lord. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Before you even get started, before you take the first step in your spiritual life and spiritual walk, before you really get committed to being enlisted, uh, you need to make sure that you're aware that our strength is not of ourselves. Amen. Uh, our sufficiency is not of uh, me. Brother Caleb's sufficiency is not of Brother Caleb. And, and if I'm dependent on my sufficiency or my might or my power, I will burn out. This isn't in the message, but let me make a statement here. Every child of God that has ever burned out in the ministry did so because they were depending on their own energy uh, to sustain them in their walk in ministry. You say, how do you know that, Brother Caleb? Because if you're depending on the energy and power of God, it is inexhaustible. There is no burnout. Amen. Every single child of God, listen to me, that gets to talking about, I just feel like I'm getting burned out. Listen. I'm not, trying to be, I'm not trying to beat you up here. I hope we can come to terms with this fact. If you're burnt out, it's not because God's sufficiency is insufficient. Because we know that it is sufficient. It is, with, it, is, it is without end, inexhaustible. His strength, His energy, His might, His power today uh, uh, will never run out. And if we're getting to that place that we feel like I'm burnt out, I'm wore out, I can't do this no more, I'm fed up. Well, then you're depending on the wrong source of energy today. Paul said, he, got, he gets started talking, making sure we know that if we're going to be strong, it'll be in the Lord because our weakness will never exhibit strength out, out, outside of depending on Him for it. When we start depending on our weakness, we cannot be strong. And so that's how Paul begins in the end. He gives us some instructions. I've got three points here. First, he says, put on. Number one, we see that we are to put on some things. The first thing he, he mentions here in regards to putting on the armor of God is he says that you may, may be able to stand, in the, uh, stand against the wiles of the devil for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual witnesses, wickedness in high places. So under this thought of put on, I want you to realize first of all that our enemy, we have a spiritual disputer. A spiritual disputer. Let me make a statement. As a believer, if you can grasp this, it will change your life. And, and I don't want to stand before you today and, and act as if I have arrived here. 
I, the Lord's still working on me. Amen. Amen. I mean, I, I'm still working on this. But I've been enlightened to a truth that helps me, that I think will help you. Tony, stand up here, son. This, you know what he is? Flesh and blood. Turn, come up here and turn around. This man right here, he's flesh and blood. I can feel him. Am I right? This is, this is, this is flesh and blood. Physical. This is a physical being. Flesh and blood. You know what the Bible said? Not my enemy. You say, but what if it's so-and-so? And what if they said so-and-so to me? Are they flesh and blood? Say amen if they are. Not your enemy. But Brother Caleb, you don't know what they did to me. Not your enemy. But Brother Caleb, we don't agree. They're not your enemy. You see, if you'll grasp that today, Grace Baptist Church will have unity like you've never seen. Never seen. Why? Because even when you disagree with somebody that's flesh and blood, guess what you'll realize? They're fighting a spiritual warfare too. Now they may be losing, but they're not your enemy. Y'all got the same enemy, and it's principalities. Spiritual wickedness in high places. There is a wicked spiritual dark realm in our midst. Amen. And it is working real hard and real diligently to wage war in your life, in my life, and in his life. And when we start using these physical eyeballs, hey, and we get our mind and our attention off of what it's supposed to be, which is the spiritual temptations to fail as a child of God, and we get bitter against flesh and blood, we're losing already, and we ain't even got started. You know what you got to do first? You got to realize who the enemy is, and it's a spiritual disputer. It's not physical. But Brother Caleb, I've been going to this church for a hundred years. I've been here for, through it all. Uh, uh, and so-and-so's come in here. And, and they say that we ought to do this. And I disagree with them. And they disagree with me. And we're just button heads. And the best thing for this church is if they just hit the road. Yeah, you're wrong already. And we ain't even got started fighting a spiritual warfare. You said, Brother Caleb and Brother Jesse must have talked. We ain't said a word i just been in church long enough to know a thing or two. And you know what, you know what a big problem is? Flesh and blood waging war. And guess what? Not your enemy. He's not my enemy. But Brother Caleb, he's hitting me. He's busting me. He's getting on my nerves. He's, he's waging war, it seems like. He's after me. Even if he is after you, he's not your enemy. And you know, what, you know what's real good is when we can get to the place where we've got enough spiritual wherewithal and horse sense to say, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, hey, maybe I'm the one that's being physical, fleshly, and allowing my flesh to dictate my warfare. You want to win? You better get your eyes on the right enemy, and it ain't flesh and blood. You can be seated, Tony. That is one of the biggest problems in the church today. Is we are so, here it is, biblical term, carnal. We're so carnal. We ain't got enough spiritual horse sense to help anybody. We ain't got enough spiritual horse sense to help ourselves, much less somebody else. And we think the pastor needs to know our opinion on this and that and this and that. And everything that we do and every decision that we make and the exact mindset that we live by is all carnally, fleshly minded. Paul said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. There's a spiritual dis, uh, disputer. And... We need to realize that these things need to be put on not only because of the spiritual disputer, but because of the sinister day. Verse three, or 13. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be, able to, may be able to withstand in the evil day. Well, let me tell you something. Uh, if you've been in this thing at all, any amount of time, you know what an evil day is where it just seems like you're spinning your wheels, every direction you look, everything you think, say, do, nothing's working, and you're just going through the dumps in this spiritual walk in life. Guess what's inevitable for the life of a believer? An evil day. 
A day where it would seem uh, that you can't do nothing right and everybody and everything's going against you. Guess what you best do for the evil day? Guess what you best do for the spiritual beings that are diligently working to fight against you. You better put some things on. He says, put on. Why? Because of the spiritual disputer, because of the sinister day, uh, we need some Christians to be able to stand diligently. He said, having done all to stand. We just don't have Christians that are standing like we used to. Now, I'm not talking about psychopaths. I'm not talking about somebody that's living on this idea. Bad attitude, Bible-believing Baptist. It's almost like if you're mean and mad, you get a badge of honor. That's not standing. That, you ain't doing nobody any good. We don't need another shop jockey Christian that's just constantly listening. The only thing they want to talk about is something that gets somebody fired up and mad about. That's not what the Bible's speaking about here. You know what we need to be standing up for? The gospel. Amen. We need to get back to standing up for truth based around Jesus Christ and His word being what's true and what's right. Paul said, put on. Then he tells us to perk up. Verse 14, stand. Perk up. Stand up, he says. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth and having the breastplate of righteousness, feet shod with the preparation of the gospel, shield of faith, uh, uh, and then he mentions the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit. And as I began to look at this, we know that this armor and, and ammunition that Paul's speaking about is spiritual, correct? We don't have anybody walking around here wearing some old English, you know, 1800s armor with a sword and a big old metal shining helmet on. Am I right? I mean, listen, you say you're being ridiculous. Yeah, and you're being ridiculous when you look at flesh and blood as your enemy because our armor is spiritual. So why would flesh and blood not be our enemy? Look at, or rather, why would our armor be spiritual if our enemy was physical? Why would I, listen now, why would our armor be spiritual if our flesh is physical and yet every one of us has probably got somebody we could name and say they're an enemy they're against me no they ain't they may be failing their spiritual warfare and it may be trickling over into your life and that may be aggravating but guess how you're supposed to approach that spiritually and let me tell you how the Lord enlightened me to some things in regards to our armor. The first thing that's mentioned is our loins girt about with truth. Well, anybody that's a student of the scriptures is, is familiar with the fact that our Bible is God's word. Say amen if you agree that this King James Bible is God's only word for English-speaking people. Okay. Well, this King James Bible is God's word. And in John 17, 17, the Bible says this, Sanctify them through thy word. Thy word is truth. Paul said that our loins are to be girt about with truth. That's your core. That's the, that, listen, everything in your being builds off of your core. And the core is not just your abdomen. It's not just your six-pack. It's your back, it's your upper thighs, and your lower abdomen. Everything right here from front to back is your core. I do physical therapy as a, I'm bivocational still yet. I do physical therapy. First thing I'm going to do when I'm trying to help somebody get better is get their core stronger. If your ankle's hurting, you can probably start strengthening your core and make your ankle start showing some improvement. You want to know why? Because it's the foundation of your being. Guess what the Lord, guess what Paul said? Gird about your core, your, your loins with truth. Guess where we find truth? This King James right here. Say amen if you agree. Not only did he say your loins gird about with truth there in verse 14, but in verse 14 he talked about our breastplate of righteousness. Well, guess what Hebrews tells us in Hebrews chapter 5? Hebrews chapter 5 verse 13 references God's word. And uh, <clears throat> there in Hebrews chapter 5 verse 13 it says, For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. 
the context is that scripture is talking about the milk and the meat of the word. And in that verse, listen to me now, it references God's word as the word of righteousness. So we're to gird about our loins with the word of God, that's truth. And we're to uh, uh, guard our breastplate, our heart if you will, is to be guarded with what? The word of righteousness. You say, what are you getting at? The source of these, this armor that we stand in need of comes from the, uh, the word of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 1 through 4 is where we find the definition of the gospel. And it's not a coincidence that Paul said that our feet are to be shod with the gospel, the preparation of the gospel of peace. 1 Corinthians 15, uh, there in verse 2, it's talking about the gospel. It says, by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you have believed in vain. Listen now. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, on the, and, buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. You say, what are you getting at? Guess where we get the truth that we are to gird about our loins with? God's word. Guess where we get the righteousness that we are to wear a breastplate of from? God's word. Hebrews 5.13. Guess where the gospel comes from that we're to shod our feet with? The preparation of the gospel of peace comes from God's word. You know, there's this man out there. Y'all know Charles Stanley. He's just right up the road, and he was, you know, always heralded as a big timer and a good man as far as everybody was concerned. But you know what Charles Stanley failed on? He failed on Scripture, and he failed on truth, and he abandoned the King James Version. And his boy has apostatized severely. And Andy Stanley is now out there, and this is his message. Y'all listen to me. This is Andy Stanley's message. We don't need the Bible as long as we got the resurrection. Now, I want that to sink in a little bit. We don't need the Scriptures as long as we got the resurrection. The resurrection is all that our faith is based on. We don't need the scriptures. Well, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 tells us that if it hadn't been according to the scriptures, there would be no resurrection. Amen. The Bible said that Jesus came and that he died according to the scriptures, that he was buried, and that the third day he resurrected according to the scriptures today. That Bible that you hold in your hand is a big deal, friend. And without it, we have nothing today for this spiritual warfare. It goes on to talk about the helmet of salvation. Guess what saves you today? The gospel. Guess where we read about the gospel at? The scriptures. Amen. And then it finishes off with the sword of the Spirit. And there, in verse number 17, it specifically tells us that the sword of the Spirit is... The Word of God. Let me tell you where you get your armor today. God's Word. All of it. As a kid, Brother Brad, we always talked about how that the sword was God's Word. Well, guess what else is? The helmet, the breastplate, uh, the loins girt about with truth. Listen to me. Your feet shod with the uh, preparation of the gospel of peace. It all comes from that book. How you doing with your book? How you doing? How you doing with this Bible? Do you have a Bible? Does it stay in your pew from Sunday to Wednesday to Sunday? Or from Sunday to Sunday? Have you read from Genesis to Revelation multiple times? Have you studied the doctrines of this book? We are scripturally illiterate. And that's why we are spiritually illiterate. Incapable. We're scripturally illiterate. That's why every enemy that we attack is flesh and blood. And the reason is because we ain't reading our Bible. We ain't studying our Bible. We're not taking God's word seriously. We got a whole lot more screen time than we do this book. And this book is supernatural. It'll give you just exactly what you stand in need of. God has put specific things in this book, listen, in the, in the 
writing down of Scripture backed by the very hands that God inspired so that little old Gentile nobodies like us could hear what God hath said. If this book is what it should be in your life, you won't have a physical fleshly enemy. You say, Brother Shoy, I feel like I do pretty good with my Bible. Well, here's an indication. How are you doing with bitterness towards a brother? Because if you're dealing with bitterness towards a brother, you're not leaning on this book. You're leaning on your own understanding. You're watching too much Facebook, YouTube, whatever, fill in the blank, Fox News. You say, how do you know we're watching too much Fox News? Because everybody's mad. You know what Fox News will do? Make you mad. Amen. Shut that junk off. And, and look, I know it's Fox News because we're, you know, we're Bible believers. Amen. But nevertheless, they just as they just as agenda based as MSNBC. I know where I'm at. Pray for me. Amen. I've divorced myself from the news. I, I just can't tolerate it no more. Because it's all a hoax. Amen. You know what we need to do? Get back to the book. Sunday school. Sunday school still matters. One of the biggest things, Brother Bragg, I'd like to pull teeth sometimes trying to get people to appreciate Sunday school. You want to say you love God and you love His Word, but you ain't faithful to Sunday school? God help us. Like, you know, the proof's in the puddings, what they say where I come from, right? You know, what do they do at Sunday school? Well, they all gather around the Word of God and study it together. Oh, I love God's Word. Yeah, I doubt that. If you ain't going where they're actually studying it, I doubt that. You, listen to me. You want to know what the message is this morning? The message is simple. We need to get back to the book. And the reason that so many are burning out, and the reason, listen... That so many are not standing and they're falling all the time. Brother Bragg, I need to talk to you. I just keep, I can't, I can't, I can't do it. I, I'm keep, I keep falling. I, keep, I can't stand. It seems like every time I do good for a little while, it's just right back in the gutter. Have you been reading your Bible? Well, no. You've been going to Sunday school. You've been faithful to praying. That's what he says next in this passage. Verse 18, praying always. You say, Brother Kev, I didn't come here this morning for this. I know. Okay, he gave it to me first, and I'm just trying to give it to somebody else so maybe it gets off of me. Amen. You know what we need to do? Pray more. You know what we need to do? Stick our nose in that book. Look, I'm not telling you to sell your TV. I'm not telling you to go shut your phone off. I'm telling you to forsake that for this. We don't, listen, America, Grace Baptist Church, what is this, Bogart? Bogart, Georgia does not need more conservatives. It needs more Bible-believing Christians. And if you're going to make it in this life, and if you're going to continue, it'll be because you have put on some things. And you ain't going to put these things on unless you're devoting yourself to this book. So many times we get focused on the fact that it's a helmet or it's a breastplate or it's a, 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 a girdle of some sort for our loins. So physically minded, so fleshly minded. It's more about the truth. It's more about the righteousness. It's more about the gospel. It's more about salvation. And it's more about God's word. And our problem in this day is none of those things are getting the attention that they deserve. He says, praying always, watching, there in verse 18, there in two, with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. You want to know why we ain't watching for others like we should? Because we're too physically, fleshly minded, <coughs> and flesh and blood is our enemy. Watching, that's our regard, and then talks about our willingness in verse 19. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. Paul's talking about the responsibility here in verse 19 to the gospel. 
Why don't we tell more people about Jesus, Brother Caleb? Because we're fleshly minded, because we're more focused about temporal things, we're consumed with our fleshly, flesh and blood enemies, we're not walking in the Spirit, we've not put on the armor of God. So guess what? We have no idea when our neighbor stands in need of prayer, and we have no idea about the opportunities to give the gospel out when the opportunity arises. You, you, probably, you probably came in contact with somebody before you got here. The gas stations, the breakfast drive throughs There are people you're going to cross paths with that Brother Bragg will never cross paths with. And we don't have enough spiritual wherewithal to know to put tracks in our pocket, much less give a track to somebody and inform them about the gospel. Paul says that I may boldly. You want to know why we don't have as much boldness in the church today? It's because we're carnal. I, look, am I right? Can you see it in the scriptures? When's the last time you went to the track rack? When's the last time you told somebody about the gospel? I don't know about that. It's probably because you don't have on the armor of God because you're not sticking your nose in that book. You're not spending time in prayer. And all you're doing is living your life based off of what you can feel, taste, see, and hear. He's talking about our willingness to tell somebody about the gospel. And most of us ain't willing because we're failing at the beginning of this thing. So fleshly minded. Lastly, he talks about the representation and the work. Paul said, for which I'm an ambassador. You know what an ambassador is, don't you? It's a representative. A representative of something else. You say, what am I to represent, Brother Caleb? The gospel. What is the gospel? Death, burial, Resurrection. You know where I used, where I come from, Brother Bragg. People would talk about people that get saved like this. They say, "Yeah, we got some. They got saved." But let me tell you, so and so got saved. You ever heard them say talk like that? You know what that is? They're doing a good job representing the gospel. How? Jesus died. Yeah, so did they. Jesus was buried. Yep, so were they. Never to return anymore. Jesus resurrected. And so did they, a new creature. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. That should be the opinion about every last one of us. Different. They just different. They just don't talk like they used to. They don't walk like they used to. Yeah, they struggle. They ain't Jesus. They're going to slip up. But look here, now when they slip up, they ain't too good to apologize. You know that has to be something out of heaven. We're red-blooded Americans. We don't say sorry for nothing. Look here, these colors don't run, huh? Bars and stars, get you some, right? Yeah. Yeah, except they're a Christian. Got a young lady. Uh, let me give you this story. It'll bless you, I think. We, we run the buses too because it ought to be mandatory. And uh, we, uh, <clears throat> I worked there at the nursing home in Jamestown, the seat of a county I pastor. And there's this little old, I mean pistol, spitfire old girl. She's, she's funny. She stands about yay tall. The other day she was standing in the hall, Brother Jesse, with another woman about the same height. And I just stopped. And they just looked. They said, what? I said, I just feel like I'm on Willy Wonka or something. Is this the <laughs> land of the munchkins? <laughs> I'm like, what's going on? And I just turned and walked on. And uh, she's funny. Her name is Dawn Yell. That's right. And uh, she come up to me and she said, you know what? She said, I got a little girl and y'all don't need to start picking her up for church. I said, praise the Lord. Okay, yeah, no problem. Where you live? She said, I live on Dow Road. Well, that's the road the church is on. I said, praise God, that'll be good. Where at? She tells me. I said, I know exactly where that's at. You got it. What's her name? Well, her name's Eva. I said, we'll be there. And it kind of slipped my mind, but it, it come to me, and I, me, I don't know, I think it was Connor and I went, and went to Eva's house there, Danielle, and gave them an invitation, and before you know it, they're on the vans, they're coming to church, and it's great, and, and uh, we start doing what we call super church. Last, uh, last Wednesday, 
of the month, we have a big service in the sanctuary, bring all the kids in, and we want to introduce church to them. Some of those kids don't know what it's like to sit in a church service, and so that's what we do. And uh, we usually try to make it a bigger deal. And, and I remember that first one, Brother Zach, he's, he's you know, uh, our youth pastor. And he said, why don't you preach to him? And I did. And, and the, the topic was uh, the gospel. Amen. And I just walked in and just presented the gospel. And, man, it's so amazing when you preach to bus kids and you tell them, this is how you go to heaven. Uh, every one of them's like, all right, deal. No problem. Let's go. I want to go to heaven. Amen. And, uh, and, and that was the case. Except, boy, I tell you, Miss Eva... Uh, she was sitting back there, and boy, she was weeping. And Miss Eva was a crying. And before you know it, she reached over and got somebody and come to the altar. And boy, Eva got born again. It was amazing. And uh, I, was, I was excited. I went back to work, and I'm telling her mom about it because, you know, her mom ought to be excited about her daughter escaping hell. Amen? And I'm telling Danielle, and I'm like, you know, now it's your turn to get in church, and we need to get your daughter baptized and this and that. And I said, we're having a VBS here, and you ought to come to commencement and listen and watch what all we do and hang out. We're going to have a Duncan booth. It's going to be the jankiest one Duncan booth you've ever seen before. Fire department built it, and it's might near uh, dangerous. might get you killed. It's going to be great. Come watch. And um, so she comes, and, and, she's, and I'm on the, the forsaken Duncan booth and scared to death because I'm afraid I'm about to get cut or something. I mean, it is janky. And she come walk by. She said, hey, Caleb, just like that. And I looked and I said, look here. She said, I told you I'd be here. I said, well done. Now I'll see you in the morning for church. Amen. Uh, Sunday morning. And guess what? Danielle showed up. And she just started kind of hitting, man, and coming pretty faithful. And then look here. On another super church Wednesday night, Brother Zach Berry was preaching. And he was preaching about the bondage of sin. And he had an, uh, an illustration there and all this. And come time for an invitation. I seen Danielle, she was sitting on the far side, she stood, took her glasses off. Y'all know what that means, don't you? Walked down the aisle, bowed down on her face, got gloriously born again. I'm telling you all this to tell you, I was at work shortly thereafter, and Danielle's not perfect. Are we perfect? She messes up, she, she's doing but I was at work and somebody come up to me. They said, hey, Caleb. I said, yo, what'd you do to Don Yell? I was like, oh, no, what did I do to Don Yell? I mean, did I say, what I say? I must have said something hurt her feelings. I, I get in a big way sometimes preaching. Oh, what did I do? I said, I don't know. Did I hurt her feelings? They said, no, you ain't hurt her feelings. What'd you do? I said, I don't know what you're talking about. I need some context. I said, Danielle, don't talk like she used to anymore. I said, do what? They said, you know, we're, we're just standing around and so-and-so got to talking this and that and said, Danielle just said, you know what? I don't, I don't want nothing to do with that. I, I'm going to check out. She said, she just walked away. Wouldn't even get in on the conversation that we was And used to, she just got on in there with us and acted the same way we did. What would you do to her? I said, here's the truth. I couldn't do that to somebody if I wanted to. But I know who did do something to her. And what he's doing is he's working on you. And see, she died with Christ. That's the gospel. An ambassador. Paul said, for which I'm an ambassador. When's the last time you just affected somebody by being a representative like you are to be? I'm talking about walking in the Spirit. We hear much about walking in the Spirit. We do very little. Where do you stand tonight? How do you want to do this, Brad? Miss Kelly, won't you come to the piano, please, if you don't mind, and let's all stand, and we'll have us an opportunity to pray. Uh, you can or, or do whatever you want to do. We're just going to be mindful, and we're just going to be obedient, but uh, let's do this. Every head bowed, nobody looking this way. We got a couple already stepping out and coming. If you feel like the Lord would have you to spend some time praying, that'd be all right. I don't think anybody in here would be, uh, would be uh, brave enough to say, Brother Cub, I'm doing a fine job walking in the Spirit. I don't ever think or act upon my flesh or carnality. I just don't know if we've got anybody in here like that. And so considering that understanding, maybe you'd be 
wise enough to say, Lord, I need your help. Paul said, praying always, praying always, maybe you ought to just come and spend some time and take your time talking to him about being what we ought to be for him. I tell you, Grace Baptist Church would be a whole lot healthier if we had people that was willing to walk in the Spirit and not walk in the flesh. I tell you, Bogart, Georgia would be a whole lot happier and a better place if the people of this town and community was willing to not wrestle against flesh and blood, but to focus on the true enemy. And that enemy is spiritual disputers. Child of God, I strongly urge you and encourage you. Mind the Lord. These altars are open. Kelly, go ahead and sing a verse of that, okay? Mind the Lord. about Paul you know he said in Romans 8 14 he said for we know not the law is spiritual but I am carnal sold under sin and then he continues on to say for that which I do I will I allow not for what I would that I do that do I not but what I hate that I that do I and if then I do that which I would not, I consent unto the law that is good. Now that it is no more that I do that I do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. One thing you got to remember about Paul, you got to remember where Paul came from and what he was. I think he's pretty familiar with dying to that old man he knew how important it was to be dead to what he used to be because the man that persecuted what he now is you got to think well some of that some of that uh i don't know what you might call it that aggression was probably still in him a little bit some of that some of that tough rough you know he was probably one that he knew that if I don't get a hold of this thing, it's gonna it's gonna control me. It's gonna define me. It's gonna when people look at me, if if any bit of that old man starts to come back up, they're gonna be like, oh wait a minute now, I thought you was a new man. I thought you changed. And uh, I don't know about you, but every now and then, in me talking about me that old man will start saying hey I've responded I've responded to my friends and brother Caleb will tell you I, I've responded I've responded to my friends sometimes like that old man starts to get a little bit a little bit of snippy a little bit of aggression a little bit of attitude a little bit of temper a little bit of bad attitude it's important, church. It's important for us to have a daily dose of that uh, discipline. Brother Eddie, me and you, you and I was talking about the other day, we was on the phone talking about discipline in our 
children, which is what I'm about to do to mine here in just a minute. Uh, talk about that, keeping them in it, keeping them. Discipline is not for you to show your children who's boss, which it does do that. But it's for it's to get them in check so they can realize that what I'm doing, uh, I don't need to do that again. <laughs> right? Yesterday we were out up here at the restaurant <laughs> at La Cabana and Riley was over there running around playing and there's a little metal statue that they've made in a little metal chair but she was standing in that chair where her little foot slipped through the crack of that metal chair and it pinched her leg and uh, she pulled it out and she and, and Brother Austin said this he said well she won't do that again I said that's one of them things we call self correcting you know but that, that's what this book is. When we get in it, it starts to get in us. And the more we memorize, that's what I was praying just now. Lord, help me to memorize more scripture and to commit it to my heart so that I know how to respond when somebody speaks to me a certain way or something happens. Or, or And I'm not even talking about, Brother Eddie, I'm not even talking about in a negative way. I'm talking about... When I'm at the gas pump and I say, hey, brother, how you doing, man? Ain't it a pretty day today? I want them to see Christ in me. And not, not just me being hateful or grouchy or whatever. I want them to be, I want them to look at me and say, there's something different about him. There's something different about him. You know, my uncle, he used to, always walk around singing he'd sing you know kind of quiet to himself all the time and my uncle Jody big man he this guy walks up <laughs> I'll never forget this we was in Walmart and this guy walks up he goes what's your problem and my uncle Jody says well what do you mean he said what kind of person walks around like that singing and whistling all the time and right there in the middle of that aisle my uncle, who would normally have jerked him up by his throat, the old man, <laughs> said with a tear in his eye, he said, well, I used to be a lot like you, sir. He said, but one day on the side of the road, I gave my heart to Christ and I met a man who changed me and brought joy into my heart. Amen. That's where, that's where we need to be. Amen. I appreciate that. That was good preaching. That was good. That was good preaching. And, and, and if you're not careful, all, we're going to hear a lot of preaching this week. Y'all listening to me? We're going to hear a lot of preaching. And if you're not careful, you'll hear one little thing in that message. You don't think, oh, well, he, he shouldn't have said that. Or, don't get hung up on that. If you got hung up on one little thing in that message and you missed the whole message, you missed it. Don't. Okay, y'all with me? Brother Tim, Brother Tim Shirley is probably going to say something to ruffle your feathers tonight. Brother Tim Fleur is probably going to say something that you don't even understand. He's going to blow your mind. <laughs> don't get hung up on that. Just get the best. The message is we need to get in this book and we need to pray and we need to try to be more like Christ. Amen. I want to say thank you so much. It blesses my heart. I mean this for y'all to be here this morning. I, yeah, I thank you. I mean that. Uh, last year, last year, I think it might have been me, Brother Ed, Brother Mac, and Caleb a couple mornings, but this blesses my heart. I mean that. Thank y'all for coming. I mean that. Patrick, thank you. I, I, I believe Patrick took off work all week. No? But he's here. He sacrificed his time so that we can, so that people that are working that can't be here can watch. So thank you, Patrick, for doing that. Amen. Brother Eddie. Wow. Amen. How about that? Thank you, Brother Eddie. That's awesome. That's yeah. uh, that's good. You shouldn't have told me that. I'm about to explode. <laughs> Amen. That's good. That's what we
we need. When you, that's what he said. When you, get a, when you want to be around that preaching and that teaching, be around the Word of God. Amen. It's a blessing tonight. It's going to be good. Now be here 6 o'clock if you want to eat. And uh, 7 o'clock service. And we're going to have a good time in the Lord. And listen to some good preaching and singing. Excited about what the Lord's going to do. Amen. Brother Ed. Yes, sir. What we could do, uh, what we could do is we'll just say uh, any men that would like to, if y'all want to meet in my office at, at uh, 645. And if the preachers are able to come in there, I'll have them in there and we'll pray. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So 645 in my office, men, if you would like to meet in there. Ladies, if y'all want to, y'all want to. Kelly, do y'all pray? Do y'all? After that, we do. She said, after that message, we do. <laughs> do y'all want to meet somewhere at 645? Sure. Nursery? Kitchen? Fellowship hall? Brother Jeremy's classroom downstairs, ladies, at 645, if you want to meet there and pray. We will have some to-go boxes and things of dinner. So if they are getting here late or can't yes. get here till afterward, we will still have some. Dinner. If you're getting here late or like Miss Beth, if you want to make Brother Jeremy, some of these guys that are working, uh, if y'all want to make them some plates, you know they not, may not make it exactly on time, we'll have some to-go boxes, make them a plate for tonight, okay? All right, Brother Al Page, will you dismiss us? All right, if you're watching this video, you've just watched one of our services here at Grace Baptist Church, and our number one desire is to see sinners come to know the Lord as their Savior. And uh, I'll read something from the Bible here in 1 John chapter number 5, verse number 13. The Bible says that these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God. And this is what I like, the most important part that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. And that's our number one goal at Grace Baptist Church, is for people to know beyond the shadow of a doubt that they have eternal life through Jesus Christ. The book of Ephesians, chapter number 2, verse number 8 says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You know, that's an, that's a, to me, those two verses are two of my most favorite verses in the Bible because it, it, it's, it's a simple plan. For by grace are you saved through faith, that we put our faith and our trust in that gift, and that's the gift of Jesus Christ from God to this world. Uh, you know, the only way that we could go to heaven um, is through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. He's, it's the only way uh, to have uh, access to heaven is through accepting Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. Uh, you know, a lot of people are mistaken today, and they think that, uh, you know, being a good person, attending church, or maybe even tithing or giving money to the church uh, uh, gains them access to heaven. But in reality... Uh, the only way that we can have access to heaven is through Jesus Christ, the door. And he is the only way. He said, I am the way. And, uh, and I want to invite you today that if you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I would ask that you would take this time to bow your head and, 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 and ask the Lord Jesus Christ to come into your heart and pray a simple prayer I'm not I'm not going to give you the exact words to pray. It's it's a prayer between you and the Lord, but I would say that you would just model the prayer after this. Lord, I'm a sinner and I realize that without you I have no access into heaven. Without you I have no way uh to forgive my sins. 
And Lord, I invite you to come into my heart, forgive me of my sins, and become my Savior. If you would pray something similar to that and mean it from the bottom of your heart and have full faith and trust in Jesus Christ, he'll do that. He said that he would. The Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And if you do that today, we would love to hear from you. If you would, just send a message to our church Facebook page, call us or send us an email, and we'd love to have the feedback and know that someone accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior. If we can do anything for you here at Grace Baptist Church as far as prayer or whatever, just give us a call. Reach out to us. Let us know. If you have any questions about salvation, you can always call our office or reach out to us online. And we'll be glad to help you with that. Thank you. God bless.